Who's ready for the Dirt Life Show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are ready for the Dirt Life Show. This is episode 111 of the Dirt Life Show. And welcome to uh, Rigid Industries. We're out in Phoenix, Arizona. And uh, as you can see, sitting next to me, we have this pretty young lady, Mia Chapman. What's up, Mia? How are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you? I'm doing awesome. So I would like to give Mia a proper introduction before we get started here. So Mia, I'm of the best teams in the world. Uh, Mia Chapman has never backed down from a battle. She is a role model for young girls and a former... I'm stoked to talk to you today. I know. I've been waiting for this. Really? <laughs> oh, Dude, <yeah>. high five. <laughs> uh, so we got linked up through uh, one of our mutual friends, Jim Beaver. Yep. And he's actually going to join us today. So uh, I'm stoked that all you guys are joining us on Instagram. Like I said, we have uh, Facebook going and we also have YouTube going. And thank you very much to all of the team here at Rigid Industries for allowing us uh, to have this uh, amazing place, this amazing studio uh, opportunity for just kind of showing you guys all the stuff that they have as well because they're one of your partners. Yeah, really good partners. Um, Super cool to come out here, you know. We live so close, but it's so hard with the race season to actually get out here. So it's cool to see some of the changes they've done here. And looks like we got a pretty awesome setup. So yeah, stuff. it worked out pretty good. So I'm stoked that we get to all we have the Dirt Life Show here. So like I said, this is episode 111 of the Dirt Life Show. I'm George Hamill. This is Mia Chapman, uh, professional side-by-side -side racer, Red Bull athlete, which we're going to talk about today. Um, like I said, we're at Rigid Industries in Phoenix, Arizona. Thank you very much to everybody here that helped us. Uh, and we want to see what you guys are doing for the holidays. Uh, I hope everybody's already ready and got all their presents done. But if you, have, if you haven't, uh, Industries Lights there, uh, you can uh, go over to ZollingerRacingProducts.com and uh, use the code DIRTLIFE. You can save a whole bunch of money on uh, any of their products. They make amazing products for your side-by-side. -side. Um, you can also go... Uh, Let's see. Oh, to MultiUSA.com as well. And check out the guys at MultiUSA on uh, Instagram, too. They have a bunch of good content there. So um, those guys are making fantastic lubricants. Uh, visit the guys at Shock Therapy, uh, ShockTherapyUSA.com. You can use the code DIRTLIFE, save a whole bunch of money on getting your car all dialed in. Uh, Evolution Power Sports, they're a new sponsor of ours at the end of this year. Um, Man, Todd and those guys are making some serious horsepower. Have you ever seen those cars with the dunes that do the sand drags? Oh, yeah, they're nuts. Dude, almost 400 horsepower or 500 horsepower in a can am. I know, that's insane. That's bonkers, <laughs> right? Uh, thank you to the guys over at Cryo Heaps and uh, the guys over at Solderweld. Solderweld.com, use the code DIRTLIFE and uh, save on their off road repair kits. You can uh, repair your race, repair your ride. So today on the show, um, we're going to uh, get me his backstory a little bit. We're also going to uh, talk about. Uh, the progression of off-road, and this is like a good subject for you because you can tell us how the progression of off-road has kind of lined up with the way that you've grown in your off-road career too. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we're going to, uh, like I said, uh, get Mia's backstory, talk a little bit more about her becoming a Red Bull athlete because that's a fantastic, I want to, what would you call Jim? Is he your agent, friend? Like how do you uh, classify him <laughs> in his professional role? He's got a lot of names, but mainly he's my manager. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Okay, manager. That's a good name. So Jim is an all-around good guy, so we can't wait to talk with him. Facility um, out in Tennessee, um, and you've become good friends with him doing a race out there too, right? Yeah. So we're going to talk with him, and then we're going to talk with none other than Jimmy Owens of Extreme uh, Fabrication. Yeah, a long time. He's been a... He's built all of my cars. He's been my crew chief, my spotter. I mean, he's done it all. So he'll be a good person to have on. Yeah, that's cool. Like, so when I was talking, we're going to uh, have everybody chime in here, I think in uh, just about half an hour or 20 minutes or so. Um, but we're going to really want to uh, get all of your guys' questions. So you guys can feel free. Um, hit us up on Facebook, YouTube, and uh, obviously Instagram. Uh, looks like we only have a few people logging in right now. But you guys are more than welcome to ask questions. Uh, and if Mia approves of them, maybe she'll answer them. Uh, Facebook, YouTube, or Instagram. You can always look at us on the archives, like on iTunes, Spotify, all the podcast networks, just in case you're driving, you don't want to uh, be watching a TV screen. And we will only get interactive with you guys. You guys have been our lifeblood this whole time, and we really appreciate you sliding into our DMs, talking about us, uh, about the guests that we have coming up, giving us suggestions on what we can do better, just like you would do to her if she had a, a good or bad race. You tell her what uh, you think you could do. So. Um, we respect all of that stuff and take it to heart. So we really appreciate you guys and want you guys to be interactive with us. So feel free to join anytime. Um, all right, you ready to get into this? Yep, let's go. So the first question is, um, I actually don't know this question. I've hung out with you a lot, but how did you even get into off-road? Um, so I started racing when I was about six years old. And uh, I got into it because uh, my dad did some dirt bike stuff, some dirt bike racing growing up. 
And uh, so naturally, you know, he kind of wanted his kids to do it. So uh, On a dirt bike you got into it or you got well, into it on a quad? So that's where I'm t- – mm-hmm. and uh, there was a trophy cart there. And so uh, at first I wasn't really interested in it. I was like, oh, yeah, that's cool. Like I'm a young girl. What am I going to think, yeah. right? And uh, so my dad ended up getting at, um, our next Christmas. Mm-hmm. And uh, so he kind of gradually got me into it. started out by taking it out to the dunes, doing some riding, getting comfortable in it. And then eventually, you know, started up really liking it a lot, especially after getting my first win uh, not too shortly after there and uh, progressed into a championship. And that's when I was really like, I want to buckle down and this is what I want to do for a career. Like. That's so crazy. It feels like it happened so quickly. But what was, like, the first move? Like, you get in there and you're, like, driving it around. You're like, holy crap, this is fun. Yeah, I don't really remember much of it because I was so young. But apparently my dad actually did. Plus, mod carts are no joke. Yeah, well, I started racing, like, the junior carts. Like, the very beginner classes because that's what you kind of had to start out doing. Yeah. And so one of the first things my dad did was he put me in the car, strapped me in, rolled patients so I knew what it would feel like and stuff. And uh, so it was definitely good to know, but my first crash, yeah, it was, it was a little rough. <laughs> when did you have your first crash? Were you, like, at your first race, or was it, like, a little ways into your... You know, it had to be a little ways in, and I literally only tipped it on its side. <laughs> like, that was about it. But, but, yeah, when you're a little kid, that's traumatizing, right? Yeah. Because <laughs> don't you, like, skid on the ground? Like... Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, so that's kind of how it started. But it's kind of cool to see that, though, because, like, your dad would be, like all right, Mia, get over it, let's get going, like, get back on the horse, like, you probably learned a whole bunch of lessons that you didn't even think you knew just by that, out of the car, and you're done with that little tip over, the done with that little race, like, what are you thinking in your head, you're like, oh my god, I just crashed, but this is the best thing? Pretty much, yeah, like, in the moment, it was pretty scary, but afterwards, I mean, you have time to think about it, like, and then you're like, that was pretty sick, so, like, my first race, I think I finished three out of the six laps or something like I, I was pretty slow <laughs> oh okay so like the leaders but but that's okay yeah, I mean like I mean, everybody how everybody starts out you know you get comfortable with it you get to learn the car what it can do what you can do telling people not to quit because like you know they go out there the first time and they don't expect to win or their parents put too much pressure on them like those kinds of things so we can get into that but um so it's pretty crazy for me to think so if you were set experience that you have in off-road racing that is phenomenal It's crazy. It doesn't even really feel like it's been that long. Like, I remember racing mod carts like it was yesterday. Like, you'd be, like, totally shredding the keys. Like, so I always think about it like that, and I'm just like, man, it's so crazy. And then I also do the adverse and look at it from, like, a guy like my point of view. Like, I grew up racing dirt bikes and stuff like that, but my um, four-wheel career, uh, it's not done yet, but it's like I've only done it for five years. Like, well, actually six now if I counted last year, but – you're double that. I'll probably give you credit for. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it's been awesome, really. I've learned so much in these past 12 years, and um, I'm glad I'm still able to do this. Luckily, it's such yeah. a fun sport, sport to be in. Totally. Uh, well, you've been busier. Like, you meet so many amazing families at the track that you kind of adapt and bring into your family, and it, it's literally just one big family. Yeah, totally. We're even getting some comments coming in that's saying, hey, what's up, Mia? I think it's cool that you have that. Like, do you... Well, let's actually take a step back from off-road racing and kind of talk about the other stuff that you were into, because I remember you telling me one time at the... When I was about 12 years old, up until I was about 16, I believe. That's a pretty long time. It is, yeah. (laughs) Which is crazy, because, I mean, that's polar opposites, right? Like, nobody expects that. Yeah, not at all. Like, I didn't... I totally didn't expect that when you first told me. I was like, whoa, I thought she was, like, all off-road girl, and then you were... (laughs) It taught me a lot. Um, kind of how to balance things, especially with having a pretty demanding cheer schedule. I mean, I was doing competition cheer, um, my school cheer at the same time. So it was two two different practices that we have multiple times during the week. And then on top of that, going to the racetrack on the ground. <laughs> Dude, I was going to say, like, <laughs> can you imagine how many rides that they were like, holy crap, like, I just gave her a ride yesterday. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. And then uh, you also have a little brother, Ryder. Mm-hmm. Is that your only other sibling? Um, I have, so I have Ryder and then I have another brother and another sister. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. That's cool. I didn't know your family was that big. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Um, is Ryder the only one that also races off-road? Yep, Ryder's the only one. But he's super into it, right? Oh, super into it. But I like you, the kid that was tipped over on the track. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's so sweet. And your brother's how old? Uh, he's 12. Yeah. And he rescued him, what, last year? They thought about that. 
Clearly he does. Yeah. And I was like, good for you, dude. Like, that was awesome. Yeah, exactly. Uh, well, thank you guys all for uh, joining us. We really appreciate it. Uh, feel free to ask me any questions, too, if you guys have any. Um, what kind of car is that? Um, it's a Polaris Razor 1000. Oh, okay. So it's normally aspirated or is it a turbo? Yep. Naturally aspirated. Oh, okay. Cool. That's cool, man. Um, and you've raced this. It looks... Oh, oh really? Mm -hmm. Dang, that's pretty cool. That's a pretty nice car, man. It is. It, it definitely gets the job on it, and it's reliable. Like, we haven't really had that many issues with it, and, I mean, we've we've beat it to heck in the desert, so... Oh, really? Yeah. Well, it looks like a good car. <laughs> um, it cleans up nice. <laughs> yeah. Well, how come you decided to go with blue instead of, like, a more girly color? You Was know, that a sponsor deal? No, but I did the pink for years <laughs> in racing, so... so you're not doing red again, huh? Yeah, no. We decided <laughs> that was bad luck. I like blue, so we went with blue. <laughs> and you've been having a lot better luck with blue? Yeah. <laughs> that front bumper looks <laughs> moved out of the way. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> that's cool. We'll talk a little bit more about the racing. Uh, Alexia said, uh, any big future plans for racing? That's I know we're going to talk about it a little later, so I'm just going to say uh, stay tuned. <laughs> So, Alexia, you can come back later or you can uh, hang out and talk with us. Uh, what's the next car? Same or different uh, plan? As we can. Luckily, like I said, it's a reliable car and we go through it yeah. before and after every race. So You have a pretty good team that looks over. You should bring up now. Like, um, So I want to talk a little bit more about like going through mod carts and stuff. But the whole time that you've been uh, racing, you've been – you and your dad or your family and even riders program, you guys have been managing most of it yourselves. Like, programs are managed now either on a professional level or on an amateur level. How do you think it is, all the all of the stuff that you learn right now, how much do you think it's uh, changed your life? I mean, it's changed. It's okay. kind of all we ever known, but it works for us. I mean, we get the job done. It gives us, you know, a bonding chance with it. Like, life lessons that you would never, ever experience. Like, I just used the an analogy of playing a piano, right? Like, yep. you would never, ever be stuck in the middle of the desert trying to fix something. Shooter. And that teaches you all kinds of life lessons for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's it's a lot of discipline that comes with the sport, for sure. And so, like, when you were, um, I mean, clearly you're learning that discipline, and you've learned it since you were seven years old. But um, what was the thing that made you go down the off-road path? I knew I was going to go down the off-road path. You know, cheerleading was just a fun thing to do on the side and kind of keep me active during it and keep in shape. Use uh, a throttle cable with <laughs> vice grips. That's somebody that you know that did that, right? Yeah. Did you hear that story? Yeah. yeah my little brother did that. That was so awesome. <laughs> Dude, that's so funny. So what did he do? Did he tell you the whole story? Yeah. So um, the car, he so never raced this car before, first time. He goes out there. And uh, championship points are really tight, so we're, like, hoping for the best, yeah. just taking it easy. And, uh, yeah, throttle cable breaks. Uh-oh. So, yeah, then they uh, finish the next, like, I think it was four or five laps. Where was this at? Oh, where was it? Was it some, like, local race, like AZOP or something, or what was it? It was the last Best in the Desert race. Really? Yeah. Holy smokes, man. So, dude, that's a MacGyver, and that's also pushing through, right? So it blows like, my mind sometimes. <laughs> that's cool. That's because he's yeah. super into it, though. So that's kind of what I was going to talk about with you, though, too, is, like, um, the amount of stuff that you've learned since you guys have operated your own program has got to be pretty mind-blowing to you. Like, if I asked you a question about a car, you could probably give me a pretty good answer. If I asked most 19-year-old girls, they wouldn't be able to tell me what, you know, a tire – or a wheel pressure gauge looks like. How to work on your own stuff, and that teaches you a lot because, you know, a lot of people, you know, have people that do it for them yeah, or something like that. But for us, I mean, we're doing it all of on our own. We're learning yep. how it goes at such a young age. But I, I love it. I wouldn't have it any other way. I think that's so cool, man. Like, it really brings a lot of joy to my heart to be able to hear that because that means that you're pushing forward to it and you're working for it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It probably feels that much better few other people chase razor what's up um so you go through and you kind of get in the mod carts and you're you're enjoying your first well uh, junior carts and then you're like okay well what's the next step and your dad's like oh to the people that are listening yeah so um a mod cart is essentially a more beefed up version of like a junior two car like they have a lot faster motors you're shifting in the cars like you're doing a lot uh, kind of related to a little go-kart but with a big motorcycle engine and only two-wheel yeah. drive and a lot more safety, and it looks like a little truck. 
Basically, yeah. That's that's a good way to put it. <laughs> but those things, like the way 450, like just raw, raw, like they were so powerful. Oh, well, they're nuts. How old were you when you were like, your dad was like, we'll try this? Or did you tell him that you wanted it? I always, and so that's something I always wanted to do. Just budget was like the biggest thing. Who was the guys that you were looking up to when there was mod carts? Man, there was a lot. I mean, I grew up class. All of. amazing drivers too. Right. Yeah, and still racing to this day. It's so yeah, cool. Yeah, it is super cool. And some of them gone on to do, like Sheldon does uh, like NASCAR trucks, I think now. Yeah. And then Sarah Price does Extreme E. And then obviously Shelby, she came out of retirement. Like, I want to be like them. Or like what was the catalyst to get into a mod cart? Yeah, so actually after I aged out of the junior kart class, we weren't planning to even go into mod carts um, until, you know, I don't know if you probably know the whole Mod Kids USA show came about. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, so they kind of approached us. Uh, the first one we rented was from Cole Keats, and that's what I did my first season in mod cart. Was that like a super rad car? It was a really good car. Like it was definitely, I think it was a little older, but it was a reliable, good car. It got me through the season. That's cool. Yeah. Um, and so like the first time you get in, are you like, oh my God, this thing is awesome. Yeah, pretty much. I've always wanted a drench in like a four door, <laughs> a four door mod car. Do they make those? <laughs> they should. <laughs> <laughs> For the big guys. Uh, that would be so fun though, to have a big guy mod car race. Um, yeah, have a dad race. <laughs> but they, te- like on a serious note though, they, te- they really do teach you the fundamentals of driving a vehicle because they're two wheel drive. Mm-hmm. They have really quick shot in it. Are you just like, wow, like like a whole nother world like i have to learn all these different things like because you have to start being smoother on the throttle like everything changes right yeah there was so much i mean the biggest thing was learning how the shifting worked and how to use a clutch and you know figuring out how the car handles practices i mean it was pretty easy to get somewhat comfortable even though you're never really comfortable do you remember yeah exactly because those cars are so fast like do you remember what the um hardest part to learn was for you because you were how old when you got in a mod car i think i was 13 okay so do you remember what the hardest part was because you're already in the world like so what was the hardest part to get into i think the hardest part for me was learning the shifting part and you know doing that like you're driving and downshifting right before a corner, then upshifting right after. Like, there's a lot that goes into it. And control. I think those were the three main things that um, took that's, me. Yeah, that's all, like, I guess the overall driving technique, right? Yeah. And uh, you're pretty busy in those cockpits when you're little. And it's like, does it ever get confusing when you're that little? Or is it just like, boom, 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 natural? At first, for sure, yeah, it was a little. For a while already. But mm-hmm. um, it seems like if... Whoever drives a mod car can usually transfer all of that into the next step in their career, like whether it's a pro light or whether it's a UTV, like what you're doing now. Like, I think the mod car class really taught you the fundamentals of having to learn how to drive the bigger trucks, like the pro light trucks, the pro two trucks, the pro four trucks. Because yep. essentially, yeah. Jason from Dusty Summit said, "What's up? What's good?" Um, I really think that there's a lot to be admired, though, because when you look at um, how hard your family is working, 12 or 13 years old, but that's a pretty uh, big next step because a mod car is not cheap to operate. You still have to have uh, money. My dad was always out there working on my car, driving me to races. And, you know, same thing with my mom. She was at all of my races supporting us. And it, it definitely took the whole family to, you know, make all of that happen. And how did the family uh, work at the races? Work makes the dream work kind of environment. Yeah. Yeah, it was never really stressful. I always like having, you know, people I'm close to and, you know, good friends with around me. Just good people overall. Yeah. Hotter than Jimmy? Jimmy was, yeah. It was my dad and uh, Jimmy for most of the time. So what I what I heard was, like, I used to have my girlfriend spot. Like, your spotter has to, like, not care what happens. Yeah, pretty Is much. Is that a good statement for you guys, too, or no? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Spotter's tower when I was racing. Oh, because she would get all wild up there, or <laughs> she what? She gets so into it when I, like, wrecked or something or some racing incident happened. Like, you took out my daughter! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. You definitely got to keep your mom old for... The first good portion of your racing career, but was there any other races that you went to? Did you do any local races like our AZOP or anything like that? Yeah, we did a little bit of AZOP. And, uh, what kind of cars? The same thing as this. The Razors? Yeah, just a little older. Yeah. Yeah, half sometimes. Oh, okay. And so, yeah, we did that like when we didn't have races, just had some free time. Um, 
here and there. So um, we're gonna get uh, your manager. Uh, Jimmy wants to talk crap on you later. So uh, Jim Beaver, what's up, buddy? How are you? <laughs> what's happening, guys? Just got back from uh, got back from so not all the time though. Just seeing this woman and her uh, insane love for off road, man. You get to hear this on a weekly, daily basis. <laughs> I, I, I hit her in the face with a rubber band and an autograph signing. So, uh, oh, are you serious? I, oh, yeah. yeah maybe she, like, uh, if you're at the race shop, maybe one of your guys that's working there has got a rubber band pointed straight at you. She, like, worked out a deal with him. <laughs> that's a good idea. Yeah. Well, the, the ongoing rumor is, is Mia has, like, these world-famous brownies legitimately, like, world that I'm going to get, like, an X-Lax batch or something like that. So. <laughs> Here, Jim, here's a tasty treat. Yeah. Or something like that. Hey, so I uh, I want to go a little bit further into this because, like, I didn't know you were a good cook. Is that the only thing you cook, brownies, or are you, like, all over there just Chef Mia? Man, I- I'm good with baking. <laughs> You're not, like, the good, like... Yeah, make some bomb tamales. Dude, Christmas time is the best time for tamales, too. Yeah, we just made, yeah. I think it was 20 dozen last week. Whoa, or are you serious? Ago. Yeah. yeah. How long are you in town for? <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so let's talk a little bit about uh, when you were first introduced to to Mia, Jim, because we're kind of uh, the time that you met her. Uh, I met her when actually at Crandon when she got her uh, Red Bull helmet from Menzies. I was doing uh, the live stream at Crandon that year, um, and that was I had her on my radio show like literally I think the next week or something like that. And um, kid really just blew me away because I think she was fifteen, and I was like. Where the heck did this girl learn how to talk? Feel that she could actually most fifteen year olds can't couldn't talk like her, you know. And so that was the first time I actually met her was right around Cranon time when she was fifteen. Yeah. A little bit, and I I literally had no idea I could talk as well as he said I did. Yeah. So that was. Did you uh, was like when thing. when he told you that? Did you like look at other the older people, you know, do their interviews and stuff, and you kind of take pointers off of that? But well, I think Jim you're retarded, so to speak. Like you can be like a normal person. That's the most valuable, and I think that's what he's saying. Yeah, I mean, literally just, like, having a conversation instead of, you know, like, getting choked up and not knowing what to say. I think that was the biggest Do you biggest think that comes – uh, or, Jim, actually, this is a good question for you. Do you th- – Like, the media presence and that? Well, I'm talking about – I'm thinking, of like, like, to myself, like, she can speak normally about it because that's what she was raised doing. Yeah. Yeah, connect on a, on a certain level because I'm – a lot of people don't realize it, but I'm way introverted, right? And uh, people wouldn't know that. And Mia's way introverted, but – I think, hey, hey, I'm Jim Beaver. And yeah. So I think, like, me and Mia have a good relationship because I understand the shoes that she's in because we very much have a similar personality. It makes it easy to talk about something. Yeah. You know what I mean? That you know about. You know, it's like these kids with video games now that watch YouTube videos, stuff like that. You could roll a camera and ask them about Minecraft. And, you know, when you get somebody at that age, but it's all they know and that's all they've been around, it makes it a whole lot easier to talk about. Yeah, 100%. That's funny that you say that, too, that you guys both bring that up, is we were actually having a conversation the other day. I care. Like, he would rather be sitting in a room by himself just, like, reading a book or, like, watching uh, a video. Like, that's where that's where he gets his enjoyment. But when uh, when we do get to – It's a lot easier to talk about, you know, or, you know, you get a comfort level around the people you're with and things like that, too. But, uh, yeah, it's interesting. I mean, it, and it's funny. You, you're that way. I'm that way. Me is that way. And it's like I can give you a list of people I know in the industry and people, I mean, all the way up to top-level IndyCar and NHRA racers that are exact same way. Like, they – I actually don't like attention, but because of their adjusting dynamics, you start getting into media and things like that and finding out how people actually interact and how they how, how they actually have interviews and things like that. And it's kind of interesting just to see how people cope and manage to be able to do that and turn that switch. Yeah, 100%. And, Mia, this is where you're supposed to say, Jim, don't get comfortable. I got a rubber band. Something like that. You know what I mean? Like, Jim sleeping over there uh, with one eye open. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're only, like, 200 miles away, but you're sl- still sleeping with one eye open waiting. Hey, that's close <laughs> enough. No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, if I knew, it, you know, Mia likes to sleep in early enough to beat me out of bed. So it's one of those. Are you good. good at playing pranks, Mia? Are you good at like a prankster? You know, I think so. I think I'm stealthy enough. Sure. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm gonna make sure that I'm penciling my schedule uh, for that, so I can go see what happens. <laughs> oh yeah, I got two weeks of planning ahead of me. Plenty of time. Perfect. <laughs> oh gosh, that's that's not good. That's not good. Two weeks of planning. Well, so um, when you talk about uh, Parker, are you gonna race Parker? Yep, that's the first race for the best in the desert season. Is it so that what you're going to do next year then? That's the plan light program with Yokohama for next year. Oh, that would be pretty so, cool. Yeah, go race champs. So, yeah, it's still up in the air. We're 
still trying to figure it out, but for sure we'll be running that in the Best in the Desert series. Well, we're going to still talk about your um, your upbringing and coming up from mod carts and stuff, but um, we'll Tarantino it a little bit here. And so when you're talking about the drivers that are out there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I raced the Perlite for the first time at uh, Crandon this year. First time ever being in it, that's where I raced it at. And it, it was no joke. I mean, there's some serious talent in there. How was it, like, putting yourself out there in a pro light? Or did you get to watch that, Jim, or no? Yeah, we were there. We, uh, we were lucky. Huh? <laughs> no, I got no tips and tricks when it comes to short course. She, she's the one that, with the tips and tricks, not me. So what was the, what was the vibe then after you rode, drove, the first time, drove it the first time? Uh, yeah, the first time I drove it was a copy a pro light. So was it, like, similar to the mod car thing, just less power? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It's, uh, I mean, it's bigger, it's heavier, it has more power, um, so it came pretty fast to me, which I was surprised at because I didn't know how fast I would be able to pick it up. Um, but it went really good. Yeah, we went out to Crandon the first day. I think I did eighth. Dang, that's <laughs> pretty good. I know. It was, it was kind of cool to watch. And I don't know if you've ever – I mean, Crandon's just nuts. Like, to me, to get top five in Crandon in any class is pretty wild. You know, it's just – I don't know, that turn one and drops. I mean, it's just – Yeah. I don't know, top five in Crandon in pretty much anything, like – I don't know. I, you know, I've had so many people go, oh, you know, you want to try short course? I'm like, dude, I don't have a chance. Like, you have to put in the work. Such a brutal sport, you know? Yeah, I agree 100%. And uh, this statement doesn't hold true um, for Mia, but, like, I always tell everybody at Crandon, you got to have massive cojones to be able to drive that track because, like, oh, big time. this is the fastest I've ever gone in an off-road car. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, I was super nervous. I didn't know really what to expect because – you know, I went testing out there with no one on the track. I don't know. I didn't know how it was going to be with the whole field, the whole race, both days. All right. So I've always wanted to know this because I've never got to drive at Crandon. I've always wanted to know how awesome it feels going into the first turn, just wide open against all of those other people. It's insane. Like, it really gets your adrenaline going. I think you kind of just learn it over the years, like – just to take deep breaths before you take off. And most of the time you don't even realize it because you're so focused on just nailing the turns you need to nail yeah. and thinking ahead like that. Just only focusing on your little zone? Yeah, pretty much. Dang, that's crazy. He's calling in at some point. He was a spotter in Crandon, so that's going to be kind of interesting to get his take. But, like, to me, I don't care how good you are. I don't care if you're Keegan Kincaid or Johnny Greaves or Bryce Menzies. Like, you want to be through first turn clean, and I think that's the biggest thing, clean. You know, it's like – yeah. You know, but when you have that many trucks going in or UTVs or whatever it is, like, it's just wild. It's crazy to watch. And I've always said that if nobody's ever stood in turn one at Crandon when the Pro 4s or, like, the cup race goes off, you know, you've never experienced racing. Like, it's the yet to be at Crandon. I would love to do that because, like, even when I watch the videos of it, like, it makes my heart shake when I see it. I'm like, oh, my God, like, that was so sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty it's, nuts. That was my first time racing on the big track there and that's why i want to like know how it feels from your perspective like go oh, deep breath no i mean a little <laughs> bit but <laughs> no like i said i mean it was craziness the whole time there's trucks crashing here and there going back and forth i mean it, it was nuts really but it was here's so a much here's fun. a question mia uh, here's a question mia though because you've done it in a utv and a mod cart obviously carts i mean you, you kind of, you know, you kind of grew up around those, especially the open wheel, because you tumble in turn one, you touch wheels in a UTV, and it's just wild ride. On the trucks, you know, you got a little bit of leeway where you lean on somebody, but it's faster, you know. So what's, yeah. what, I mean, what's more intimidating? I think the trucks. You crash, it's gonna hurt that much more. Yeah, At, like all the weight distribution and yeah. all that. Dang, that is kind of crazy. I, I would think that but, some of the big drivers in the in the pro light class, but. Um, I guess to each their own, right? And Mia's got uh, more experience than both of us. Expert over there, dude. Th that's cool, though, man. That you've had the opportunity to do that. How many times have you been to Cranon, or is it just once? Uh, I've been quite a few times. I think we went three years. In opportunity to go on the big track. I know, dude. It's so cool. The smile on her face, Jim. <laughs> oh my gosh, dude. Uh, <laughs> um, so. That's Give us a little bit of it. Yeah, it's been pretty awesome to watch her, you know, and it's one of those where I don't co-drive well, and it was funny because we were doing some shock testing out here, Parker, and I don't know who, I don't know if Joe brought it up or something. We start mobbing through these whoops, and I'm going, holy crap, and then I was like, all right. I was like, I knew there was this one bad one here in Parker, and I'm like, all right, this car is going to upset itself. It's going to go up on its nose. I just know we hit it just like we knew I would. Thing goes up on its nose, and I'm like, oh, my gosh. And just like butter, this kid steers right out of it, sets nice. the, the car down, 
And just like nothing, never let off the gas once. And I was like, I, right. I was like, she's earned my respect. It's like butter. And I'm like, I've seen so many people wadded up there in the races and everything else. And it was just like, I was like, all right, color me impressed. He can wheel, you know what I, um, all the talent in the world, you know, I think it's just, uh, just one of those things where it's, you know, with a lot of things, it's, you know, uh, you know, she has a, a good understanding of everything that goes on in the motorsports world. She understands how hard her family has worked now. She's getting a little bit of an understanding of how all the back end works with your knowledge. Yeah. And it's going to be really cool to see what happens. I mean, she's one of these young kids that are coming and I still call her a kid and obviously she's not anymore, but it's like, you know, I never even really started my career until I was like 18, 19, because UTVs didn't exist. You know, it was like dirt bikes, quads, stuff yeah. like that. But you look at kids like that, and I mean, ours been racing for well over a decade. I'm like, it's so different. Even Rob McCacker didn't get his start, start to see when they're 35, 40 years old. Even somebody like RJ, who I said, was kind of real, the first product of the youth movement in the system, like to see how good they are. Because list of kids, you know, her age that are they're racing, but I'm like, man, we still got to let them mature. You yeah. know what I mean? Because none of them have peaked yet even a guy like rj I think like mia like there's all this pressure but i'm like man let the girl mature let's see where she's at at 25 you know 100 uh no <laughs> hi rider uh but it's it, it is true that you or it's funny that you say that because we were talking with me a little bit about it earlier and um you know i started my uh, four-wheel career um just over five years ago her brother is what 12 years old now and he's already got like i think two or three years on me and mia has been doing it for a well over double the time that i was in it like it's insanely at this age you know and i've been fortunate you know the utv stuff um kind of you know started you know shifting my career focused in more utv stuff in the last couple of years like to be able to race against some of these younger talents and stuff like that and um you know i'll tuck behind them in a race just to see um how they drive and it was a couple of years ago i was in a turbo car and had some downtime and seth cantera was in the na car and, uh, you know, and I had downtime and Seth passed me and he thought, you know, he knew I was going to get him back. But there for a while, I just tucked in for about 10, 15 miles and just followed him just to watch Seth drive. And then finally it opened up and I got around him. And, you know, after the race, Seth goes, he goes, how come he didn't pass me? And I was like, well, one, you were really, really quick. And I really didn't <laughs> need to because I wasn't losing time. But I was like, two, honestly, dude, I just want to watch you drive. And like, you know, he was 17, 18 at the time, but it was actually really cool to be able to watch these lines and how how good these kids are at that age like i mean to me it still blows my mind it's it's wild you know and and they like see said, things just, differently oh they do you know and truthfully i've crashed i've crashed a lot and uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm i'm scared to death i'm 40 years old dude i i don't want i crash and it's like yeah i'm pretty sore i'll go see my friend judy the chiropractor you know the next day <laughs> so, nice uh it's uh yeah it's wild man um but yeah it's it's really cool to see this youth movement and see you know the the drivers like mia you know come up through the system and and what i really loved about the youth movement is you have not only guys but you have this amazing crop of young talented female drivers yes. that are being thrust into the industry that we never had in the past and i think that's really really cool um, you know, to see these talented female athletes, you know, that are just as good, if not better than the men, you know, competing and going door to door. Smile again. Uh, all right, Jim, we, <laughs> we're going to have Greg Love from uh, Brimstone uh, Recreation on right now. So, um, hey, I wanted to say thank you for lining all this stuff up here at Rigid, man. They got such an awesome little area for us to have this show. And uh, we really appreciate you helping out this awesome woman, Mia. Oh, no problem, man. Thank you for uh, having me on. Thanks for having me on, and thanks for everything you do for the sport, buddy. Dude, absolutely. Same goes back to you. We'll talk to you soon, Jim. All right. Take it easy, buddy. It's cool to see um, how passionate he is about off-road, right? It is. He's a really good person. So we're going to get uh, Greg Love from uh, Brimstone Recreation, I think is what it's called. Greg, what's of all, your name is Greg Love. But uh, <laughs> maybe give us a little bit of an understanding because Mia's already met you, but myself and most of the audience hasn't. So um, you have a uh, recreation park out there in Tennessee? Yeah, we're located about 60 miles north of Knoxville in East Tennessee, up in the mountains in got uh, almost 20,000 acres and 300, 300 miles of trails. So you can just go for days and days and days. Man, that's pretty cool. And you've got to go out there and check out this place called Brimstone? Yeah, Red Bull had the Red Bull Stone Scramble out there. Is it because it's called Brimstone? Is that where they got it? Yeah. yeah. Nice. And I noticed that Red Bull keeps putting an S in front of the scramble. Uh -huh. Sand Scramble, Stone Scramble. Yeah. <laughs> No, but Brimstone was absolutely beautiful. It was one of the coolest places I've ever been, let alone raced at. I mean, they got an endless amount of trails, and, like, the trails that we were racing on, it was so much fun because we've never, 
a lot of us never did that type of racing. Like yeah, you're racing. not a big trail girl. You're like a desert girl, right? Yeah, so it, it was really cool to kind of get out of my comfort zone a little bit. Was that the picture that I saw of you um, where you're all muddy? Mm-hmm. Like you're like, yeah. even your like face is muddy <laughs> underneath your visor? Yeah, it was pretty muddy. It rained like all day. Uh, but so you get different types of terrain and stuff out there, Greg, and obviously you have to deal with the weather. Too. It was beautiful until about 30 minutes uh from the start and then it started raining and it rained time. So, uh, you know, and I, I tell everybody, I said, if it was easy, Red Bull wouldn't do it. So uh, <laughs> that's, that's kind of, yeah, but it was a whole lot of fun. I enjoyed meeting Mia and her dad, Joe. And, you know, it was kind of funny when I first came up and met them, I was talking to her dad and then me and this guy comes up and with her and I kept looking, kind of looked friend. at me. Yeah. And so she kind of looked at me funny and I looked at her dad and her dad looked at her and it was like, he was saying, okay, let's hear it. Her and her family and, uh, all of our sponsors and, you know, uh, just having them there was just, uh, a lot of fun. Yeah. It seems like it would be really cool. And especially like what you're saying, Mia is like, it puts you in a hole before. And then you also, you all of a sudden you're going across the country, you race in Tennessee, you got your UTV and it's totally different terrain. Everything's different. Like, does it even feel like the same as what you're used to? Not really. I mean, I've never been to Tennessee, let alone raced in Tennessee. So yeah. that, that was a whole different ball game, but, um, it was so much fun. Like, it was so different. It got me out of my... Co- was, how many competitors, like, all that good stuff. Yeah, so it was um, the Red Bull Stone Scramble, as I said, and it was more of, like, a... It's very different because I'm not used to woods racing. Right. Let alone, you know, throwing some rock crawling in there. Totally different tactics. Yeah, so I learned a lot about things I didn't know I could do, like racing through the trees at the challenge, and... Um, it was just overall such a good time. I mean, How was it, cool. like, going through the trees and stuff? Like, so obviously Greg has been doing it for you can fit through. You almost have to be, like, more one with the car because you don't want to clip anything, right? Yeah, exactly, especially with, you know, throwing mud in there. Like, you don't really yeah. know what the car is going to do. So It's, like, slips out or whatever, slides. Yeah, yeah, I hit a, I hit a few trees. But oh, you did? Yeah, we don't got to talk about that. Did you break your car? <laughs> no, luckily there is no, like, major damage, but uh, I gave – a few little love tags. You know, I had the vision for it uh, probably a year and a half ago, and we admit that it was so nice to finally put it together. But uh, I had a good friend of mine, Hubert Rowland, come up, and uh, and I do. And I said, I want to incorporate all the elements that Brimstone has in this race, and that's the only requirement. And so he did all the work after that and put together a, a fantastic track. Hey, so you can blame it on Hubert. You just tell him, hey, maybe could you space the trees out a little bit more next time, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> West Coast went over there, right, that were Red Bull athletes like Seth Cantero and Mitch Guthrie, and there was probably obviously some other really good drivers out there. What did everybody think about it? Um, I mean, like, yeah, like us West Coast people never really done that before. Yeah. But he had a ton of fun, even with all, like, the rain and mud. Like I said, it just made it more of a challenge. And we got out after the race, and we were all just laughing because it rained after the race, so it got some of it off. Oh, thank God. Woo. But, you know, once we got home, it, it was a real mess. <laughs> uh, so the Dune and Destroy guys are so good to have some of the people from the West Coast come over and do this. And I had seen some of them at the mountains them say, hey, we want to come over there and, and ride your park because we've heard about it for so long and so it was just great to have uh the west coast meet like what you're talking about like i'm talking about like a a mud race at glen helen or something Mm -hmm. i spent like almost 10 hours trying to get the car clean after that like that's the worst part yeah i imagine that but like 10 times more muddier (laughs) no i don't want to imagine that but i do i do want to race one of those races it seems like it's pretty cool Uh, so our specialty over the years has been uh holding uh large events But also, we do a lot of corporate retreats and uh, things like that. So uh, the week before this race, we people that have never gotten out and, and, you know, got on a side-by-side to get on the trails in, it's fun to see. And, you know, I always do a test and and to see how many people have their cell phones and, and, you know, recording uh, social media and those things. And after about 10 minutes on the trails, most of you know, two times a year, that we bring in uh, some country music and uh, just have a weekend of rides and events. And we've incorporated the 
the stones nailing that day cool. down uh, in the next little bit. Right on. It sounds like you got some fantastic stuff happening. What's your favorite uh, music, Mia? Or your favorite type of music? Not so much. <laughs> a little bit, but. <laughs> so um, there, you could go out and get some uh, country music in and go some riding. Well, actually, when we had the race at Brimstone earlier this year, um, after the race, they had like a concert with some pretty big country music singers. Out. Appreciate it. We're trying to get as many of these, uh, you know, like Mia and her family to move over here towards us. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's tempting. My dad always says he wants to move over there. Like, Really? He's down. Yeah. yeah. Nice. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's super cool. Who knows? You might have a good uh, Red Bull next door neighbor here one of these days, Greg. <laughs> Hey, we 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 will welcome her anytime. She knows that. <laughs> That's awesome. Have you seen how uh, official Joe's beard is looking these days? I haven't seen it for a couple of years. Uh, well, I'm glad that uh, you were able to meet this wonderful young lady over there when she came out in the race with you guys. I'm sure you guys are looking forward to having her come back again. But I'm really excited to see that uh, not only that you guys are offering this stuff and obviously making progress with your facility, but I'm glad to see that the industry is supporting you guys, and I'm glad to see that you guys are supporting the industry too. It means a lot to all of us that are in the off-road industry that everything is working out and growing so well. Yeah, I appreciate that, George. You know, uh, we absolutely couldn't do it without them, right? And you couldn't do it without all the racers and people that are out there too. So if you guys are interested, what's the? Uh, how can they communicate with you guys, Greg? Well, the best – Best way is just get on Instagram and follow us on Instagram, Facebook. Uh, check out our website. You know, we've got cabins. We've got campgrounds. You come out there and not even have a side-by-side -side and have a great time stay in a cabin and ride. Oh, that'd uh, be fun, huh? Right? It sounds so yeah. nice. Yeah. So Mia and yeah. I are like thinking about maybe doing that instead of racing. Obviously, both of us agree on coming and hanging out. <laughs> I know. I've been telling him after that race. I was like, I want to go back out so bad. Like, we're going to make a trip. <laughs> yeah, totally. Uh, well, that's awesome, man. I think that's really cool what you guys are doing. And obviously, uh, best of luck in the future, too. Yeah, thanks so much, George and Mia. Good to see you. And I'm I don't know if you know how to click the X to get off Instagram, but we'll see you later, bud. We really appreciate you coming on the show. Yeah, thank you. Uh, all right, so everybody that's on Instagram right now, you're just going to have to sit there and watch basically a blank screen with all this stuff on in the background because um, we're going to take a We'll see you guys in a second. We're here at the Mint 400. My name is Kerry King. I'm with the OTSFF Motul. The issues that we don't have while we're using that oil is self-explanatory. Motul Oil, they've been with us for over 12 years. They jumped on board with us with the uh, 6100 race truck here, and Mint 400, and they've been an amazing partner with our lubricant. in the industry to perfect our shock tunes and race proven components for all UTVs. Whether it's high speed racing or slower trails, visit shocktherapist.com to improve your ride today. Zollinger Racing, billet steering knuckles, billet steering racks, alternator kits, and much more. 
all manufactured in the United States in-house at their headquarters in Nibley, Utah. Travis Zollinger and his team test in some of the most brutal conditions, racing and many more. Visit ZollingerRacingProducts.com and use the code DIRTLIFE to see our products in action. Period. Yeah, finally, we got Lance from Solderweld in the studio. Uh, Thanks for coming down, bud. Hey, why don't we just record a commercial now? Yeah, why not? It's so good to be here, man. It's been a lot of trying to, whether it's a UTV or some guy's got it in a backpack and was motocross, he's got uh, everything he needs to make a fix right there on the fly, out on the trail, uh, or in the desert, whatever it is. Well, since I've already used one, I kind of know what to use it for, but uh, explain what it does. All right, so let's pull one out real quick. You've got your aluminum rods. Remember, they're rods. Right, so, uh, you know, light torch, small torch, you can uh, throw it in there or throw it on the rig with your flux. It chip in a radiator, you got to fix it right there or you're yep. out of the race. You can patch it up. You can of patch it up, it's all good to go. Yep, just like welding. Yeah, also as well with that, you've got a brake line fix. So uh, with your flux, you can fix a uh, brake line. It's just not even to fix anything, so it's, that stuff works <laughs> so good, man. Listen, it's easy. It's uh, It straps in nicely so that you uh, have everything you need in one little place, and you don't have to carry a big bag and get you back in the race. Dude, those things are so cool. All right, so it's at SolderWeld on Instagram, Facebook, and uh, SolderWeld.com. Awesome. All right, thanks, bud. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome back to episode 111 of the Dirt Life Show with uh, Red Bull athlete Mia Chapman. Actually, we got another uh, person that's going to... Oh, yeah, we actually have to have Jimmy come on. There he is right there. Uh, so we're going to have Jimmy Owens from Extreme Machine and Fabrication come on. And then we're going to try to finish it up, man. Okay. These shows get busy. I know. Time and flies. Isn't it crazy? <laughs> we're already at like an hour and ten minutes into it. It doesn't even feel like and that. And talk about it a little bit, too. Like, when did you start, like getting introduced to Jimmy and like the um getting your cars built by him and stuff like that when I jumped into the mod car class I think we knew him a little bit before then oh really yeah but then he started like working with you and doing all your stuff yeah like he was my driver coach when I jumped into mods he built my second mod car so he's been there. a little bit or if you can sit up a little yeah, bit I'll do that right now we know you're a short guy but you mean you gotta <laughs> stand up a little bit higher <laughs> uh so it's gonna tilt she looks good with that headset on. Oh, maybe I should start driving. Oh, there you go. Uh, we were actually talking. We were actually talking a little bit about it earlier. And uh, you, when you have a good spotter, they have to be kind of disconnected from the emotional attachment to the. How has it been working with uh, with Mia? When did you meet her? And uh, you know the relationship that you guys have now. Some of that stuff. I think. I mean, most of our relationships I started late in her J two career. You know, just as watching them and talking to her dad and that. And then when they got in the mod business, that's when the relationship uh, really blossomed at that point. We, were, we started building mods then, and they got one from us along with a couple other kids. So, Yeah, it was, it was like the first uh, the first generation of mods kind of thing? or Especially going from kind of a used car into like a brand new mod car. It was awesome. Really? Yeah. Yeah, because then you get like the new freshies. It's not all clapped oh, yeah. out. Like you're like getting the good one. <laughs> Man, that must have felt super cool. And uh, so when you're going and you're talking to, to Jimmy about it and you're thinking, okay, okay I'm going to get into this. And then he's like, all right, well, whatever you guys need, I'll lend you a hand. Yeah. I mean, he really helped the class. Right. And, you know, he had a few years of it. So um, definitely a valuable person that um, we added to our program, and he's still involved with me to this day. Learning and learning and learning. Oh, yeah. Stacking checks, basically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that checks of knowledge. Uh, <laughs> was it having her as one of your first drivers? Actually, it was good. One, she being a girl, because I'm a big girl fan anyway in the racing yeah. program. And, uh, yeah, it was a good deal. Like I said, and it was new for us at the time. Like, we just started that whole program, you know. So it was a learning curve for all of us for a little, little but there, we were on the fast course, you know. But, I mean, I've done a lot of stuff in my past, Pro 2s, Pro Lights, all that stuff. But it was uh, a little bit of a transition. So, yeah, I was going to say. And it, the driving's a little different. Well, it, but it's also cool because you're um, – how do I put this? Uh, 
you don't have to deal with a professional, so to speak. So uh, when you're dealing with a professional and it's a, and a, usually an adult, you have to deal with the, the way that they react, the way that they deal with their program. And a kid is a, a much better platform to start from the ground and work their way up, right? So they're willing to Correct. take knowledge and do it a lot differently. Yeah, the, I mean, there, there are sponges, right? You can feed them whatever you want, and they'll pretty much listen. That's the good part. Sometimes it doesn't work, but most of the time it does, you know? Have you ever yelled at Jimmy <laughs> back? Like, if he's saying, go, go, go. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> I couldn't imagine we you yelling come, back at him. We have come in crying a couple times, though. Oh, oh yeah. Right. We've, but she gets, oh, yeah, she, <laughs> she gets emotional. It's probably because you want to win so bad, though, right? It really adrenaline flowing. You have all of the focus, and then all of a sudden everything's done, and it's like, oh, like what happens now? And everything just comes out, right? Yeah, and I mean the passion and drive for it. You just want to do and the best you can, and it didn't always go that way. Yeah, exactly. So, so Jimmy, I actually have a story. Um, I remember the first time that I was ever on track with Mia. I think I was um, fighting for maybe top three in the the production one thousand championship at the time. Um, and we're at Wild Horse Pass, and uh, it was I think it was just the time when you guys just decided, hey, we're just going to race the mod carts, and we're also going to race the UTV this weekend, or maybe the mod car uh, wasn't that weekend and you guys decided to race UTVs, but for whatever reason, uh, she was out there in the UTV class, and I go, all right, well, I hope she does good this weekend, and then we go out for qualifying, and she passes me and blows by me like I'm standing still. I'm like, holy shit, you know, like, what the heck is this girl doing? And then we go out to the main event, and uh, and she's running up top five. Like, she's, like, on my uh, bumper the whole time, and I'm like, dude, this is so <laughs> rad that she is doing so well, and she didn't even – have the same amount of track time in a UTV that all of us in the, in the lead pack did, and she was right there. Yeah, what a lot of people don't realize though is like people like Mia, they started when they were six. You know, by the time they're sixteen, they got ten years under their belt. Exactly, and that's a big career. You know, that's where a lot of the older guys don't get it. It's like these kids have been racing for a long time. They're not new to this. Yeah, they might be new to that car, but they're not new to racing. Yeah, and exactly. It's just they got to adapt to the vehicle. Yeah, as far as the racing part, they got that figured out. One hundred percent, and I was so surprised, but I was so stoked at the same time because, like, uh, well, for me, two things. Like, I had only, I've still to this day, I probably only have a third of the amount of uh, uh, years that Mia does in a in an off road car. But um, at the time, I was like, man, this is so cool to see that she is this focused and this uh, good of a driver. Right. And that comes from her dad, like the amount of time they spend in the effort practicing and testing and racing. I mean, it's definitely a life career or life sport, right? Like that's all you do is eat, sleep, and breathe racing. Yeah, to get so to that level. Let's yeah, let's talk about that a little bit because that brings us to one of the subjects that I want to talk about tonight. Is um, first of all, how um, does it feel to be at this point in your off road career? It feels amazing. I mean, thinking back to when I was twelve, thirteen years old, I. I would never guess I'm at the point where I am today right? and the point in my career. And, you know, so much has happened and I've learned so many things. Um, but it really is awesome to see something you work so hard for and all your dreams kind of start coming true and you get to that point and it's just awesome. Was there any times, because I want to talk about the um, some of the really big milestones that you've had, like uh, winning races and obviously um, becoming a Red Bull athlete, but is there any times before we talk about the good stuff that you – remember that you don't want to ever have happen again, like a crash that you had happen or a mistake that you made on track that affected somebody else or a mistake that you could have affected or rectified in the pits if you had done something better before? Like what are some of the big things that have happened that you know not to ever do again? I think the biggest thing was just making mistakes and, you know, looking back at it afterwards and realizing you could have done something different. But, I mean, it's too late after the fact. Oh, like easily avoidable kind of thing? Yeah, and like little mistakes that just shouldn't have happened. But, I mean, that comes with the sport. That's part of racing. And it was kind of hard to accept, especially the older you get, you know. Because you put yourself under so much pressure? Yeah. I think kind of every driver does in a sense. And, you know, making mistakes is part of it. It's just hard learning to, like, accept them. Well, they come. I know because I know Jimmy uh, well somewhat well, not as well as you guys do, but I know that he's a good mentor to have because when you feel like that, he can tell you, well, you know what, as long as you learn from it and move on, then you're doing a good job. 
Right. And, you know, and I taught Mia this a long time. She'd come in and be upset. You got to remember, that race is merely 15 minutes of your day. That's a 24 hour day you're on. Right? Yeah. So you're going to let 15 minutes ruin your whole day. Just yep. wipe it off. Let's go to the next step, right? That's that's the mentality you try to teach the kids, that it's only a race. It's only 15, 20 minutes. A desert race is obviously longer, but in short course, it's a short period of time. And smile at fans. Yeah, Move one, on from there. Dude, 100%. Because we're going to race tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. And we always talk about this, actually, in the Dirt Life show, is every good racer has talking about is you just forget about it and move on. Yeah, pretty much. And it took me a long time to learn that. And I'm, I still remember the day he told me that, and it's stuck with me ever since because I don't think I ever really thought about it that way until he yeah. said it and brought it to my attention. I'm like, yeah, you know, that's right. But you wouldn't be a good racer unless you were hard on yourself. So both things, they go like, uh, I don't know, yin and yang kind of thing, right? Yeah, so yeah. it's good that you have that, and that's why we can see that you guys, it's awesome that you guys have that relationship. And it's good to see that uh, Jimmy is willing to put in the effort to help you uh, enhance or further your career too. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, none of, I wouldn't be where I am today without him, my dad, you know, most people that have helped me get to this point. So when you said, when you talk about that, and uh, I would like to get Jimmy's uh, response to the same basic question is when you get the opportunity to represent Red Bull and to have that uh, relationship, that's a really meaningful thing for anybody on the planet, let alone a youngster, right? So when you uh, understand that you've been working your butt off these so many years, and you have that opportunity, what does that make you feel like? Does that, uh, you know, give you chills? Does it make you feel motivated? Like, where, do, where does it rate on your scale? You know, it's really hard to describe because, like I said, you put in so much work for so many years and so many people, you know, put in the work with you. Right. And so it's really indescribable, but it just, it really motivates you to know that people, you know, are noticing and seeing the things you're doing. Right, because they're actually noticing the behind the scenes, not just the podiums. Right, yeah. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And what does it feel like for you, Jimmy, more as a, uh, on a mentor level, when you see somebody accomplish something like that? Actually, it is pretty cool. I mean, I was there when she got the Red Bull um, the hat. I knew a month in advance, and I couldn't say a word. Oh, you know, yeah, man. we got to get to the coming. story. Like, we had to shut our mouth. It was tough. But the, even the whole day, it was like, I mean, it, was, it was pretty fun. What was the story? Yeah, so... I guess we'll kind of get into my Red Bull story. So um, the way I kind of got into it was um, me and another girl that was racing at the time, Madison Dye, that, um, she doesn't race anymore, but we went to train out with Ricky Johnson. Oh, cool. And, yeah, that's when I was starting to race mod carts and learning how to control it. So we went out with him for the day. And um, he kind of briefly mentioned Red Bull was looking for a female girl in, like, the off-road side to kind of bring in. And um, so he ended up getting uh, me a meeting with one of the people. Whoa. Yeah, so I had one meeting, and uh, I thought it went pretty good, you know, and then a week went by, a few weeks went by. And, and you were, what, 16 or 17 at the time? Uh, 15. 15, okay. Yeah. 15. Yeah, so a few weeks went by, never heard anything, you know, a month from it, and then uh, that's when Crandon was coming up. And so we go to Crandon, you know, start doing our thing. And, and Jimmy was with you in Crandon? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, him, my dad, my mom, my whole family knew. I just didn't know. Oh, really? Yeah. How so, long did you guys know before this, Jimmy? Probably, I knew it probably be a month. Oh, crap. So this whole time, yeah. this, this whole time, this poor oh, little yeah. girl is like freaking out about it. You guys all <laughs> right, knew. Right. <laughs> Jerk. Dad, dad, got, dad got the word. Yeah, dad got the word and then. And a few days later, I think he called and tipped me off. But, hey, this is what's happened. you got to be quiet. And then we prepped for it accordingly. You know what I mean? How it was going to go and make sure we had everything we needed. But, yeah. And I knew, like I said, I couldn't say a peep. Like, God, was, that that secret would suck to hold, too, because you got to see, like, <laughs> oh, Mia, exactly. like, all right, we'll just go race. Yeah, like, typical, normal Crandon race here. And I think we had practice that day or something. And, like, the last one went bad or something. I was in a bad mood. And my dad uh, comes up to me afterwards, and he's like, let's go uh, check out Bryce Mayer. And we're kind of checking out all his Pro 2, Pro 4, the Razor and everything. And uh, Bryce comes out. You know, he's talking to us a little bit. And then he's like, you want to go for a rip around the track in the Razor? I was like, yeah, because, I mean, Bryce Menzies is my idol. Yeah. Like, Growing duh. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, you, we get in the Razor. We go down on the track, and then we stop at, like, the finish line area. Mm -hmm. And I just see all these cameras, and, you know, my dad's there. I think Jimmy was there. There's a lot of people that he's holding it, and he goes to hand it to me, like, welcome to the Red Bull team. And I didn't know that he it was mine. And I was like, why is he having me hold his helmet? Like, that's cool. 
And he was like, no, like, welcome to the Red Bull team. And I was like, oh, my gosh. No oh, way. and then you got – that gives me chills just thinking about it. It was so crazy. It was oh, crazy. man, that yeah. is – yeah, Legion Motorsports, that is freaking awesome. And so it's probably <laughs> was just as cool for you guys, Jimmy, too. Well, because obviously you can, like, let it, the secret go now. But <laughs> Right, exactly. <laughs> but to see the smile on her cool face – yeah, any young athlete to get that kind of a chance is worth it, you know? That's just an awesome – large group. I mean, there's 50 kids in any day of the week that could have that deal, right? Yeah, exactly. So it was neat that she got it, right? Uh, we can't read this whole question, uh, uh, but, yeah, I can't read it, man. So um, it's too long of a, of a comment. But um, So when you get that, like, are you just thinking, like, you guys, you guys had me freaking hanging on this for, like, a month now – and then do you, is that when you take the rubber band that Jim hit you with and you total jerks? Everyone's like, yeah, we knew for like a month. Oh, month insult like, to injury. Okay, cool. <laughs> oh, man. Well, it's got to be a good feeling, though. And um, I love that story so much because it means a lot to me because first program – from beginner level to professional level, it all takes a lot of work, right? And then you've been doing it still to this day um, with your family and the help of others. And that is not something easy to do for that long of a time, 12 years now. I mean, that is just phenomenal. So when you get awarded for that, I feel like I'm proud of you because that was a lot of work. Yeah, thank you. It was. It was, a, it was an amazing day. I mean, I'll you know, I idolized Bryce Menzies, and they made yeah. that happen. So, Dude, that's yeah. so cool. It was really cool. Uh, what's your favorite Red Bull right now? The peach one. The peach one? Yep. Big, <laughs> pe big peach girl over oh, here, Jimmy. Yeah. Big peach girl. <laughs> yeah, I like the peach too, though. <laughs> uh, so do you have any funny stories about uh, any of the past years with Mia, whether it's in a UTV or a cart? They're all funny. She's just fun. I mean, it's, it's nice to give her, you know, harass her all the time. And we always make fun of her because she don't like to drive. She always sleeps. You know what I mean? Like Jim said, she sleeps till noon. You know what I mean? So it's, it, that stuff's fun. Uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. We just had somebody comment in on what their favorite flavor was, but I didn't see it. That's yeah. crap, man. I'm not doing a good job. Sorry, Red Bull. I didn't see their favorite flavor, but we know Mia and Jimmy is peach. So yeah. Um, <laughs> and I'm I'm a big fan of the, just the regular stock sugar free one. I like that one. That one's pretty good too. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Especially when you have to um, milestones, because we're gonna talk to Mia about this a little bit, Jimmy. That uh, that rate highly on your list of accomplishments for her during her uh, mod cards or razor career. I would say that uh, besides the Red Bull hat when we got it that day, that was a, a great milestone. And uh, I think the biggest thing that sticks in my mind is the Crandon race that we just ran this, this year with the uh, Prolite. That was pretty intense. Like that – and I'm a big Prolite fan anyway. I've ran a lot of kids in that program. And to go there with Mia and finish eighth the first day and fourth the second day was amazing. Like that to me was the highlight of the thing with her, you know. The, to go to that place – and we only tested for two days. It wasn't like we were there for a month. We went there for two days, knocked it out, rolled the dice, and that's what we came up with. Dude, that's so good. And, dude, the stacked field over there, too. Um, well, Jimmy, you're probably going to like this answer. Oh. Sound cliche, but uh, just don't give up. Like, you're going to have a lot of good and bad days in racing, and, you know, it's easy to let it get the best of you, but just keep pushing. And, you know, with the boys, you're, you just got to earn the respect by showing it yeah. on the track. Like, that's the biggest thing is just, you know – not letting it affect you and doing your own thing and doing really the best you can. Yeah, and just remember, too, like, as being no matter what it is, and I know that because I'm a person that wasn't able to operate my whole body the same way. I'm not an able-bodied person, and I could still go as fast and win races. So Mia can do it just against the older boys, younger boys, whatever it is, just like I could when I was uh, uh, racing professionally, mind to it and put effort into it, like what Mia does and what Jimmy does to help all the kids as well. And, you know, once you're a driver, once you bolt your helmet on and put your suit on and strap in, you're just a race car driver. 100%. There's really not a boy or girl at that point. You're just a race car driver. You got a job to accomplish. You got your marks to hit. It's the same process. There's no. Adrian uh, just said, being a girl, uh, do you think it was harder to earn a respect? I mean, <laughs> yeah, I guess in a sense, like Jimmy it said. It was pretty I, easy for me to understand and respect you when you were on my ass that hard in the UTV. <laughs> I was like, okay, she's got not playing around here. Yeah, I mean, growing up, my dad, you know, never 
made me feel any different for being a girl in the racing sport, like never made it a big deal. So I was like, okay, I'm just, you know, a girl doing what the guys do. Yeah. But uh, it was a little, it, it gets a little hard because, you know, you jump in there being a girl. A lot of people think you're, you might just be a pushover and you're not going to be that good. But once you get on the racetrack and really show what you can do, like your skills, that's that's kind of how you earn the respect. Yeah, you got to prove it and yeah. make it. Yeah, but well, that that kind of goes with being a guy or a girl. Like it's not just a girl thing either. Oh, Oh, one hundred percent, dude. When I first jumped into it, I got pushed around so much, and I was like, nope, this is not happening. Yep. Like so, I yeah, that's cool, man. Um, so that's the uh, advice that you can give. Um, how about you, Jimmy? What would kind of advice would you share? Um, being around so many. Uh, different young women, obviously your uh, daughters, and then obviously young men as well. Um, what, what advice would you give to that same question? It's, I mean, it, it, testing, right? Practicing, seat time. There's no other way around it. And I don't really care if it's on a racetrack, especially with the young youth. The younger they are, the more you can get them behind the wheel, the better it is. I don't yeah. care if it's driving around in the backyard, you know. They got to get comfortable with the gas pedal, the steering wheel, and the brakes. And then as they progress, you can progress with them, right? Teach them more. Take an advantage because they think it is a girl. But usually once you give them a wheel back, they usually knock it off pretty quick, you know. Yeah, because um, they don't want to take themselves out. The, the guys that do 100%. that. 100%. The guys that do that have more pride in themselves than anything else, so they don't want to look like a bad either. So once you show them something right. and give them a wheel, they're like, okay, I better calm down here. Yeah. Uh, right. That is cool that you guys understand all that. Um, when you guys are uh, in a race and you're in an intense battle, what are some of the things that you do um, knowing Mia so well to uh, either calm her down or show her what she needs to get done on the track? And I think the big thing for being a spotter is being the second set of eyes for them, right? I see the guys behind you. I see the hole that guy just hit. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you can give advice that way. Crandall was a fine example. We got the green. We smoked down into turn one, and she's in there. One car came in, and one came down. We were smashing the sandwich. I yelled at her, get out. So she jammed on the brakes and let him go. Otherwise, we would have probably wadded it up. And then we went back at it again. But it's been able to see that to help them, you know. And she's really good at listening. Like, we have a – yeah, it is trust. you got to trust, you know. Um but that's the ticket right there is being able to listen to your spotter and understand that that's just another tool to use. Yeah. I, I, you, I love that advice. Yeah. And cause like, uh, you always have to have that trust in, in whoever's working with you. And doesn't mean a spotter or a mechanic on your team, a tech, whatever it is. Cause you got to be able to make sure that you're executing properly. But I do like that. He's looking out for your best return. Oh yeah. I mean, the stuff he can see, I can't see, and he saved me a lot of times. And really just we established that trust pretty early on, so that definitely helped because I know whatever he's going to tell me, um, I don't have to second-guess it, and it's safe to do. And it was way better than your dad. <laughs> They're pretty – you know, my dad's really quiet on the – need it. Oh, okay. Like, if they see stuff I can't see, of course, like, I want to know. Yeah, like, you got to take the inside line and turn four yeah, or something. Yeah, Definitely, like, someone screaming at me the whole time, not going to work. Yeah, so I was, the, <laughs> I was the exact opposite. Like, no screaming on my radio. I'll just turn it off. But, like, you have to talk the whole time. Like, yeah. no matter who it is, that's time. And that's kind of how the pro light race was, just race was because it was just craziness the whole time. There were so many drivers in that class already. So we, we kind of always had our hands full for the most part. That's kind of cool, though, man. Yeah. Was, it, was that different than any other race that you and Jimmy have done because it was so intense? Yeah, it was so intense. I mean, I'm racing against full-grown men at this point that have been doing it, you know, forever. On, the, like, the world's awesomest track? Yeah, it's insane. I've <laughs> never experienced roost like that before. Like, like on what the was start, it like? You, ju you can't see a thing. Like, off the start, you just see, like, Like, dirt. people just shoveling dirt in your eyes? That's literally what it's like, yeah. Really? <laughs> uh-huh. Dude, did I you told her with her, I said... I told her, I said, you won't see, you'll never see anything like this in your life. The amount of roost that's going to come through. Holy oh, man. smokes, man. It'd be like tractor full of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's crazy. Uh, but that sound is like, it was a really good experience in your book. Yeah, it was, it was definitely the, I think the coolest experience of the year getting to do something I've always wanted to do. And I had such a great team behind me that gave me an awesome truck with having, Jimmy to my for sure. That would be super cool, man. It would be so awesome to see you on the podium and like in a pro light. That would be so much. I would be so proud of you. That would be <laughs> so cool. Uh, and I hope so. Chris says that uh, Robert is uh, Alexia's spotter. Uh, she, <laughs> she won't let him on the radio at all. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, so, Jimmy, when uh, we're talking a lot about short course stuff, and that's where uh, a lot of your expertise has started in, but uh, as Mia expands her driving capabilities and she does desert stuff, like in this Polaris Razor right behind here, um, how has right. how have you seen her develop in those skills as well? She does good. She's patient, right? She'll because desert racing is not like short course racing. It's not as quite well. Does that uh, give you as much? Uh, I don't know, uh, satisfaction driving like that? The desert stuff? Yeah, because it's not as intense, right? Like, you don't get the same adrenaline. Uh, well, I guess some people do. It's different. I mean, yeah, like like he said, you have to be more patient. And you're in the car for hours on end. Yeah, um, and you can't go pee. Y- you can't go pee. <laughs> and know that all that hard work paid off, and and you actually made it to the finish. Because that's a big thing in desert racing, is keeping it together to make it to the finish line. A lot of people don't. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, I mean, just making it there is a big accomplishment on itself. Uh, Brian Forrester said it was good seeing you at the Red Bull uh, Sand Scramble. Uh, you're a badass. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, you rock that pro light. <laughs> so it sounds. Uh, I think they were at Crandon when they probably saw you race it, huh? Yeah. That's super cool. Um, well, Jimmy, what uh, what kind of stuff can you uh, foresee on uh, meet the horizon for Mia Chapman and her off-road racing career? Because I see a lot of good yeah. stuff. Yeah, I see a lot of good stuff. There's a few things we can't talk about right now, but yeah, there's some good stuff going. Um, I think they're working on the desert program for a little bit next year, and there's some other stuff in the works. So we'll okay. see how that all pans out. Cool. Well, I'm really yeah. excited to see where it goes too. So, um, all right, if you had to give me one word to describe Mia, what would it be? Oh, for like the word awesome or something. So oh, no. I like his answer. That's super no, funny. She is awesome. That is awesome. <laughs> so every time I call her dad, because we we travel a lot on the road, so it's usually me and her dad talking on the phone. Hey, what's me doing sleeping? <laughs> what's me doing? How do you like if you if you're like prone to fall asleep in a car? How do you not fall asleep driving a race car? Like it's like so crazy to me. Like it's apples and oranges. <laughs> Well, it's so different. I mean, you're actually driving the race car when someone else is driving. It's like, oh, okay. What was it like when you got your driver's <laughs> license? Were you just like, oh, this is like so easy? Mm-hmm. And my the driving instructor I got when I was oh. she said that. Yeah, that's hilarious. So I got my uh, license in California when I moved out there a long time ago, and uh, I did all like I just did it normally. And the guy goes, "Have you raced something before?" And I go. Uh, how how can you tell? He goes, because the way that you drive, like, it's not, like, I wasn't speeding or anything, but he's like, you're not looking in the mirror and you're not second guessing the thing. Uh, uh, well, thank you very much for joining us, Jimmy. We really appreciate it, man. Uh, do you want to give him, like, as a final closeout, do you want to tell us a funny story about Jimmy? They're, they're, uh, no, uh, he's awesome though. He's been a part of my life for so long now, and I'm sure he'll continue to be a part of it going into the future. I love that dynamic, oh, yeah. man. You guys get along really well, and I love the dynamic, man. It just puts a smile on my face. I can't wait to see you guys at the races next time. So, um, all right, Jimmy. Well, thank you very much for joining Thanks us, and uh, please tell tell Jess, Jen, and everybody that we said hello. Dude, that was a bad comment. Yeah, Broiler, you shouldn't be commenting in crap stuff like that, dude. That's not nice, dude. Um, all right, so. Um, Let's see here. Where do we have to go here? Oh, well, so we were going to ask the what's in the future for Mia, but it sounds like some of the stuff you can't talk about yet. Yeah, we got a few things in the work for next year. I mean, um, like I said, we're going to be running the NA class and the Best in the Desert season stuff in the works that hopefully I'll be able to share soon. But all I can say is uh, stay tuned. Okay. Well, thank you very much for uh, telling us all that stuff. So we can follow you on social media at uh, M-I-A-A-A dot Chapman, right? Yep. So um, it's got three A's in it. Three A's, yeah. Okay, good. So uh, And we tagged uh, Mia in a bunch of our stories and uh, obviously the last post and stuff. So um, go follow her and check it out um, to see what she has going on in the future. Um, man, I'm, like, excited. Like, I kind of want to go. Like, I wish it wasn't. I pretty much answered all of the things that I wanted to talk about unless you have anything else that you want to talk about before we do the rapid-fire Q&A. I think we kind of touched on everything I wanted to. Yeah, uh, it was kind of cool because all of those other people b- asked the, the similar questions to what I was actually going to ask too. Yeah. So, um, all right, let's see here. What time is it? Yeah, it's about time. So let's do the rapid fire Q and A. You ready for this? Oh man! All right. Please tell me. You, so you you promise you didn't cheat by looking at this? I promise. Okay. <laughs> uh, Mia, you're awesome. Uh, yeah. So. Thank you. Heart. My mom makes a mean carne asada taco. Really? What like? Yeah. What do you put on it? Just cilantro. Yeah, cilantro, salsa, 
Oh, you're going big, oh, dude. Yeah. Now I'm hungry. <laughs> uh, chicken or carne and scramble? Like, you're trying to get on that next year, right? Oh, yeah. We're going next weekend. <laughs> really? Yeah, for New Year's. No way. Uh, it's going to be so cold out there. Uh, three-wheeler or quad? Man, probably three-wheeler. That's all we have at our house. Really? <laughs> my dad's obsessed with them. Oh, my gosh, man. It's tamales. So <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, Berta, I'm a little upset that Mia didn't give me a Christmas <laughs> present with some tamales. At least one tamale to taste. I mean, gosh. <laughs> uh, pizza rolls or jalapeno poppers? Pizza rolls. Even though they burn the shit out of the top of your mouth? <laughs> yeah. Coffee or tea? Coffee. <laughs> uh, big coffee girl? Oh, yeah. Are you a Starbs ad- addict, too? So do you know who Maddie Wedeking is? Yep. Oh, my gosh. She's, like, the worst at Starbucks, We dude. follow each other on everything, and every <sighs> day I always... She's there. I bring her coffee, like, because she lives right down the street and works down the street from me. So oh, it's like, gotcha. oh, my gosh. So the Starbucks addiction is kind of, like, coming off on me now, too. So uh, even though I've never, ever tasted, fun fact, I've never tasted coffee in my life. Really? Ever. Not even once. Not even licked it. Wow. I know, right? Uh, favorite movie? Talladega Nights. Seriously? Yeah. What's your favorite part of that movie? <laughs> the one where he's doing his interview and he's like, I, I don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> <laughs> do you feel like that sometimes? Yeah. Does you, how does your brother do in interviews? He's very serious and to the point. Really? Or what would it be? Ooh. Like anything. You can fly. You can teleport. You can be like super speedy. You could read minds. I would hate that. I would hate to read minds because I don't want to like know what people are thinking. See, I do. Really? I, yeah. I feel like I'd be so creeped out if you were in my head. Like, no. Nope. Everybody's thinking. Yeah, but do you want to know what everybody's thinking? Like, what if you go to the grocery Whoa. store and you, and somebody's like sitting there and you just like, oh no, I don't want to know what that dude's thinking. <laughs> uh, Netflix or YouTube? Uh, Netflix. Like, what's your jam? I got a lot. One show on Netflix about Formula One. I just saw that today, actually. Oh, dude, you got to watch it. I want to. Like, big fan right here, big fan. <laughs> uh, your most memorable race. And if you're going to say Crandon, it's got to be other than Crandon. Okay, other than Crandon, it was probably back when I was racing the junior carts, and um, it was the last race of the year. I was fighting for a championship. It was pretty close. Against and who? Do you remember who the, who the other driver was? I can't at the time. I think it was Orion Rodriguez. Oh, really? Yeah. I know Orion. And uh, I had rolled. I was racing that and then um, a Razor 1000 at the time. Dang, look at you. Yeah, and I rolled the Razor in qualifying, and I ended up breaking my right collarbone. No way. Yeah, so I had to go into the main event and race that way. With the broken, did you take pain meds? Yeah, I did. Didn't help that much. So it, it was broken collarbone. I broke in some ribs. Dude, you're like Concussions, a you're um, a wreck over here. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, anyways, long story short, I raced like that, ended up getting the championship by like a few points. It was super close, but it it was rad to know that I could do that. That's cool that you could push through all that stuff, man. That makes me feel good that you're that strong of a person. You just <laughs> um, done them in uh, cream cheese. Yes. Cheez-Its and Donald, ooh, they're Those so good. good. Yeah, they're the bomb. <laughs> uh, so you eat that on the road? Like, what's your favorite road snack? Yeah, I like Cheez-Its. I like Gushers. Whoa, <laughs> Gushers? Like Hot Cheetos. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I showed your dad a Hot Cheetos taco that just popped up on my Instagram. Uh, <laughs> do you watch dirt bike racing at all or no? A little bit. Not, uh, not as much as All right, as I'll others. change this question then. It was going to be Supercross or Motocross, but uh, off-road or short course? So let's see here. Oh, this is an awesome one for you. What other form of racing would you like to try? Ooh, I don't know. Like, it could be anything. I tell everybody all the time uh, when I ask this question, like, it could be monster trucks. It could be speedboat racing. Like, it You know, I've seen – it pops up on my Instagram feed all the time, but the Red Bull airplane drivers yeah, and how they do those crazy tricks. No, like, they're way gnarly. I would just like to ride in one. Yeah, same. Cause, but I feel like we would all throw up. Yeah. Oh, this one's a good for, good one for you. Um, maybe this is the clip that we're going to take out of it. <laughs> Who is your celebrity crush? Oh. Like, it could be anybody, too. Well, if you're a big country girl Man. or you're a big rap know. girl, too, please don't see it's Drake or somebody like that. No. Yeah. You guys go. If you're not Channing <laughs> Tatum or Parker McCollum, good luck with them. Um All right. Final question of the night, and this is the most important question that we always ask everybody. 
Chips and guacamole or french fries and ketchup? Sometimes I switch it up, say french fries and ranch. I, I really want to like Even it, though your mom can't. can, like, make all, all this awesomeness, like, I you're know. not doing guac? No. Okay, chips and <laughs> salsa or french fries and ranch? Chips and salsa. Yeah, all day, right? Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, so, uh, I really want to know what's going on in the future for you, so I'm going to be paying attention to your social media, and I'm going to be watching and seeing how everything's going to go for you guys. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time away from uh, – Everything that you got. And, you know, sit down with you. So it was awesome. Yeah, it's super cool. So um, if you guys want to follow the show, you guys can always check it out at The Dirt Life Show on Instagram. Um, and it's The Dirt Life Show on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, and obviously you can check it out on all the archives, iTunes, fa- into watching the shows and stuff. So we really, really appreciate it. Um, <laughs> I don't know what any of this comment means from Jimmy or Jen. Um, okay, Jimmy said Mia loves moths. I hate moths. Can't stand them terrified of them don't want nothing to do with them plus they eat your clothes they just tore the crap out of your pants right here here we go (laughs) (laughs) i'm the old guy that comes up with that line right you know he quit the quick thing he threatens to put uh wrap my race cars and moths on the inside Ooh, i wouldn't want that i know that gives me the creeps just thinking about that Mm -hmm. jimmy you're not that wild horse pass we had a whole bunch of hospitality and everything and one guy wanted to come out so i was like yeah i'll buy you the rv spot you just got to cook all weekend so he cooked all this awesome food and then he's like, I know what's going to make you win the race. So I get in the race car, and there's two pieces of bacon hanging in the windshield. He's like, you'll go faster because you can try to get the bacon. And I was that's like, that's awesome. That's so sweet. So thanks, Jeff, for doing uh, that. So maybe we need to do that for you. Yeah, maybe. that. You in a desert some, race? Yeah. Like <laughs> some just, peach Red Bulls right there. Yeah, you just you get hungry or thirsty. You just take a yeah. drink or take a bite of it. <laughs> um, but, yeah, like I said, I really appreciate you taking the time and obviously your family for doing all this stuff. And we really hope that you have a, a really, really good future ahead of you. Um, it sounds like you have some pretty fun stuff. Um, oh, and Wheel, um, Sparko, Kicker Audio, Rigid Industries. I'm sure I'm missing a few on here. There's so many awesome people, but thank you to everybody that makes all this possible. Would I see possible Discount without? Tire, r and uh, Extreme Machine. Oh, obviously Extreme Machine Fabrication. <laughs> Let me see what else I, I got over here. Uh, I can't see it. Oh, Pro Armor. Yeah, Pro Armor was a big sponsor that came on this year and helped us out a bunch. So appreciate all you guys. Um, that's awesome, man. It's always h- awesome to see that other people are involved in your program because that means that they care about you and the things that you're doing. I always tell everybody, I told your dad and he agreed with me, racing is a very, very difficult thing. No matter what, everybody needs sponsors, partners, money, finances, everything to be able to go out there and do it. And if you don't have the passion like Mia and her family does, you're never going to be successful. We appreciate the fact that you guys are out there just grinding away to be able to fulfill the stuff that you love doing. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, all right. Well, thank you very much, Mia. I really appreciate you guys doing everything. Uh, so everybody in the audience, we owe you guys um, so much for being a, a just such a crucial part of the Dirt Life show. So you guys can always go to, uh, let's see here, uh, Shock Therapy. Shock Therapy has a big discount code there. Evolution Power Sports, Zollinger Racing Product, Cryo Heat, and the guys at Rigid for having us, man. Uh, we really, really appreciate everybody uh, that was here just helping us set up. Colson, Mike, uh, Aaron for introducing himself. I say it just flat out. I deserve a break. You do. I'm going to go take some time and have a good uh, <laughs> Christmas with my family. So we hope that you guys do as well. Uh, we really appreciate everybody. Uh, like I said, January hosting that with me. Um, it's going to be really, really cool. So we'll see you guys in Southern California for that one. Uh, we really want to thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, thank you. Uh, all right. Thank you guys for uh, living your dirt life with us. We really appreciate it. We love you guys. Thanks, Good night. guys. Thanks for listening to The Dirt Life Show.